Scripture says, No one knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. And yet we go on, and on. Trying to predict the day of his coming. Well, I think Scripture gives us a strong hint as to when that day will happen, and this study will provide that hint. And as God has said, he tells us the end from the beginning. So let's get started. Scripture says. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. I can hear your thinking now, saying, What has this got to do with possibly knowing the day that the rapture should come? If you are so inclined to read the book of Jubilees, it also has an account of this same event, but it adds a few more details that are not made known to us in our scripture. Now, for those of you who believe that every extra-biblical history source is corrupt and should be censored, take from this what you will, or ignore it altogether. It reads as, And in the first week of the first jubilee, Adam and his wife were in the garden for seven years, tilling and keeping it. And we gave him work, and we instructed him to do everything that is suitable for tillage. And he tilled the garden, and was naked, and knew it not, and was not ashamed. And he protected the garden from the birds and beasts and cattle, and gathered its fruit and ate, and put aside the residue for himself and for his wife, and put aside that which was being kept. And after the completion of the seven years which he had completed there, seven years exactly, and in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the serpent came and approached the woman. And the serpent said to the woman, Hath God commanded you, saying, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? I want you to note what is circled in red. This time marker is not mentioned in our scripture. It says, And in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, is when Satan tempted Eve. God does not give this kind of specific information just to fill the scripture with words. It is given to let us know what has been done, and also in some cases, what will be done. Now, an event happened in our scripture, on this exact same day that Satan deceived Eve. Can you guess what it was? Scripture says, In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. So, as you can see in the yellow, it was the same month and day that Satan tempted Eve, that the flood came. And did not Jesus refer us back to the flood of Noah, in reference to the Son of Man's return? Let's look closer to see what happened to man on the day Eve was tempted by Satan. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. On the same day that Satan tempted Eve, man felt ashamed and put on a garment, 
and did so by sewing fig leaves together to cover themselves. This is man's first attempt to care for himself after the original sin has happened. Remember this, because at the rapture, God will provide us a new garment to put on, and we will not be ashamed. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothed them. As I said before, in order for us to be accepted by God, we have to be clothed in the garments he has prepared for us, as no other garment is acceptable by him. We must be dressed in garments of righteousness, the garments derived from the blood of the innocent, to cover the deeds of the unrighteous. So God slaughtered one of his innocent animals, to provide an acceptable covering for man, until the Lamb of God came and spilled his blood, to take away the sins of the world. So, on the same day when Satan tempted Eve, God prepared for man, a temporary covering, provided by a blood sacrifice. This is only the second time God has spilled innocent blood on the earth for the cause of man. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live for ever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Another thing that was done by God, on the same day that Satan tempted Eve, was to remove man from the sanctuary, that is the garden, into the place where God had formed him, and started his life. Now to recap. On the second month, and on the seventeenth day of the month, Satan deceived Eve. And on that same day, God made for them garments to cover themselves, and removed them from the garden sanctuary. Likewise, what do we expect to happen on the day of the rapture? We expect for God to provide us with a new garment, and to remove us from the earth into the heavenly sanctuary. The only difference is, it happens in the reverse of how it actually occurred. In the first scenario, man received his new garment, and was removed out of the garden sanctuary, back into the land of his birth. In the rapture scenario, man receives a new garment, and is removed from the land of his birth, into the heavenly sanctuary. So, is it possible that the rapture could happen on the second month, and on the seventeenth day of the month, according to the Jewish calendar? It seems a very likely candidate. We already had two samples of the rescues of God on the same day, the first in the garden, and the second at the flood. Maybe, just maybe, at the appointed time, when this day comes around for the third time, it will be the charm for the rapture to take place. Thus, God will have declared the end, from the events that took place in the beginning. If you want to be ready for a possible, appointment of the second month, and the seventeenth day of the month rapture, according to the things that took place in the beginning. Tell God. I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Tell God. I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God. I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God. I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then should that day, be the appointed time for the rapture, you will also be a part of it, and receive your new garment, and be transported from the earth, into the sanctuary of heaven. Hallelujah. Thanks for watching. I am in no way setting a date for the rapture. I am merely pointing out a day already announced in scripture, as the possible day, since it is given in that context. If this is the day, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to your remembrance in due time. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and comment, and give it a thumbs up. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. Amen.